Breastfeeding provides a cost-effective supply of sustenance for baby, custom-made with just the right balance of delicious taste and optimal nourishment. Baby is designed to thrive and grow as they feed off their mother's milk. This excellent source of nutrition serves as a natural immunization, protecting baby from many illnesses such as colds and flu while they are breastfeeding, and additionally serving as a protective barrier later in life against chronic diseases such as diabetes. Breastfeeding also lowers mum's risk of developing breast cancer. The emotional benefits to both mum and baby are widely recognized. Breastfeeding is the first real connection that most moms and their babies experience. If you can exclusively breastfeed for the first six months of the child's life, that is the best thing nutrition-wise you can give your child. Breastfeeding is convenient, it's easy to do, it's always the correct temperature, the correct consistency, and contains the correct amount of nutrition. The breast comes in all shapes and sizes, and none of this really has an impact on how much milk one will produce. The breast is made up of ducts, where milk travels through, and alveoli, small sacs where milk is produced. The nipple is where the milk is ejected through and the areola is the dark area of the nipple where glands excrete a scent to help baby locate the nipple. My name is Renelle and this is my firstborn. It's a boy and he's six and a little bit weeks old and his name is Victor. I never had any problems with breastfeeding. It's just the most natural thing. He loves it. I love spending time with him and I love having food on hand wherever we go. So the breastfeeding for me has just been the most comfortable way to feed him because I don't have to worry about bottles. We don't have to get up in the evening to, to warm formula and all, all of those things. Colostrum is the breast milk that is produced within the first 72 hours after birth. The colour of colostrum may vary um, from mom to mom, but the, the consistency is usually thicker and stickier than mature breast milk. There are small volumes of colostrum that are produced in the first 72 hours, which assists in babies' a small stomach capacity to grow. Within three days, mature breast milk starts to come in, and that can take up to a week. Um, but in a normal, healthy mother, it usually is within three days after the placenta has been delivered and the baby was born. Full milk is the part of mature breast milk that is high water content and it serves to satisfy baby's thirst. High quantities of full milk are found when the breasts are full. Hind milk is the portion of mature breast milk that is high in fat content. It serves to satisfy baby's um, hunger and helps babies grow. Hind milk is found in greater quantities in breasts that are emptying. Hello, Lysander, how are you? Fine, sister, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. I'm Annel. I'm going to help you to latch into the breast to help you a bit with the breastfeeding. Is that okay? Bring a pillow because a pillow helps to bring the baby to the breast. One of the biggest challenges is how to get the baby onto, bre onto the breast to latch him. You can Mommy must have a nice place to sit. She must be prepared. It doesn't matter if it's in the lounge, in her room, in baby's room. As long as she has a nice chair to sit on, she needs to have back support. And we recommend that she elevates her feet and a nice pillow to support baby on. Baby must be brought to the breast. Mommy must never lean towards the baby. The baby must, must be on a pillow or the pillow must support mommy's arm. But, but the purpose of a nice pillow is to bring baby to the breast. And then of course, mommy should have a glass of water or something to drink and something to snack on because a breastfeeding session can be quite long. It can take up to an hour for a young baby. Mommy, one of the biggest challenges is to latch a baby. Let me show you. If you, you hold the baby in the perfect position, this position is good. Your, the palm of your hand under his shoulder blades, his body is in your forearm. So you always bring the baby to the breast. Never, never bend down and bring the breast to the baby, oh, but the baby okay. always to the breast. 
So you bring him close, you tickle him with, you, with the nipple on his upper lip, support his head with your thumb and your forefinger and his body is in your arm. When he opens his mouth wide, you, you bring his whole body closer. Very important that a baby comes to the breast with a wide open mouth. The minute that the baby opens his mouth wide, he should be able to, to latch onto the areola, not onto the nipple, but onto the areola. So that is the area around the nipple. Babies must never latch onto the nipple because that causes nipple pain and nipple damage. It might feel like a stabbing pain or a pinching pain. So then mommy must put a small finger into the corner of baby's mouth, break the vacuum and let go. Never pull the baby off the breast because that causes nipple damage. From about 36, 37 weeks of pregnancy, you can start applying nipple cream. The nipple cream helps soften and strengthen the areola as well as the nipple area. After baby's born and you latching baby and after every feed, apply the nipple cream again. It does help to prevent the cracked nipples, the bleeding nipples, and just the pain associated with the saliva of the baby on your breast. Also remembering, every time you latch your baby, there will be an element of pain, and then it's over. It's simply the letdown response from the lactation. My name is Anna Gret, and I've got two boys, Robert and Andrew. Robert is two years old, and Andrew is now six weeks old. I've been breastfeeding Andrew uh, since birth, and also I breastfed Robert up until the, uh, 13 months. Being a mom is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Um, I thought I loved my cat a lot until I had my two boys. Um, so you just have to make it work for everyone in the family. You have a newborn baby and um, it's difficult to know how to hold him and to get the positioning right and the latching part and they always emphasize how important the latching is. So it's a little bit daunting in the beginning, but with a little bit of practice, you do get it right. There are three favorite or recommended breastfeeding positions. The first one would be the cross cradle or the cradle hold where baby lies with his stomach against mommy's stomach. So we call it tummy to tummy. Baby's body is close to mommy's body. Baby's body is in mommy's forearm and mommy's hand is under his shoulder blades. And the pillow is here to support your arm so your arm can rest because baby must be very close to your body. And he can even tilt his head slightly back because his chin must always be first in the breast. His nose should be open. Okay. If it should hurt any time now that he feeds, if he's in this position, you can just slightly bring him closer because sometimes babies fall half asleep and they slip off the breast and they latch more onto the nipple and then it becomes painful. It's always a good idea to undress them for a feed because the skin to skin is so good for bonding. The baby feels very happy and safe and it's just good for mom and baby to do a lot of skin to skin. The second one is a rugby ball position. That's for mommies with bigger breasts or for a mommy that just feels more comfortable in this position. So you will hold the baby next to your body. Baby sits or lies in your arm, so your forearm will still support baby's body and your hand under his shoulder blades. When he's very sleepy, touch him, talk to him, stimulate him, keep him awake, and then he's, suck, then he's sucking again. Very good. And baby has the same freedom that he has in the first position of lifting his chin to go into the breast so his nose is open to breathe. And then the third position is lying down. Mommy will be lying on his side, baby's lying on his side, tummy to tummy again, and he will lie on a pillow if mommy has very small breasts or he can lie just flat on the mattress, but he will feed on mommy's breast side to side. The early feeding cues on a newborn baby is quite easy to see. They start sucking everything they find close to their faces, so they might suck the blanket or their lips or their fingers. And the key is to latch your baby on as soon as possible when you see that cues, because they escalate very quickly, going from being comfortable sucking their fingers to full-blown screaming. So it's quite important to latch them on while they're still calm, uh, relaxed, and then opening their mouths to feed as soon as possible.
Did you know that one teaspoon of milk is a feed for your neonate in that first few days of life? A teaspoon. What do we picture when we see babies feeding? Don't we all picture a bottle half filled with formula, thinking that is what my child needs to drink? It's not true. Children are born with unique um, brown fat, which is high in glycogen, high in sugars. They don't need to feed the way we perceive it in our heads. A child sitting there with a massive bottle of formula, especially not in that first few days of life. Your milk will take two to three days to come in, as we say. All you need to do is persevere. Within the first three days, you are um, giving your baby colostrum. They will feed about eight to 12 times a day, which might give you the impression that they're not getting enough, but the, the concentration of the colostrum is very high, so they only need small amounts. With formula babies, they might feed every four to six hours. With breastfed babies, definitely um, the interval is much shorter because that food digests so easily for them. After three days, when your milk starts coming in, when you look at the nappy of the baby, you will also um, notice that the consistency of the stool has changed. It went from a stickier, darker to a more um, softer, yellowy, greenish color, which is a good thing. Um, so don't be afraid of that. And then also, um, if you look at your number of nappies that you change um, during the first few days, it's only it will be a bit much less, about three nappies per day. And then as soon as your milk starts coming in, it will become three to five dirty nappies per day and six to eight wet nappies per day is quite normal. Babies are born with that unique phenomenon of brown fat. And that is why for the first few days of life, they will lose weight and that's okay. When your milk comes in, you can expect about 100 to 200 grams of weight gain per week, which is completely acceptable. And babies are usually back at their birth weight at about seven to 10 days after birth. It's recommended that you take your baby to the clinic for the first six weeks every week and then thereafter every month, once a month will be more than enough for the first six months. It is good to hold the baby upright against mommy's shoulder, to tap him gently but firm on his back or rub his back in an upward direction and that rubbing will cause vibrations that will break the air bubbles to get the wind out. This is a nice position to wind your baby as well. So you keep the baby upright, you support his chin with your one hand and your other hand will just tap him gently on his back or rub his back upwards as long as you straighten his back. And this usually works very well to get winds out. Babies often fall asleep on the breast and now their stomach is full, they want to sleep, but you want to put them down so they can have a nice rest. So if baby was undressed, dress him, change his nappy first, swaddle him in his blanket and then you put him on his back. That is the safest sleeping position. When you swaddle the baby, make sure he can get hold of his hands because they often suck their hands for self-soothing. So you're going to wrap him nice and firm in his blanket, but with his hands close to his face. And there you go, mommy, he's swaddled. You can put his beanie, his hat on. Okay, baby, okay, big boy. Sometimes they wake up when you do that. So then you can feed them again or you can just hold them and calm them down and until they are settled and then you put them down on the back to sleep. Sometimes after feed, baby's still a bit unsettled and mommies can always do kangaroo mother care. That means skin to skin. So you, mommy would undress the baby with only a nappy on and inside her top or inside her pajama top, doesn't matter what she's wearing, she can put the baby on her chest and baby, it's guaranteed that baby will settle. Babies love it to be skin to skin on their mommy's chest. They feel safe, they feel just so happy because they hear mommy's heartbeat, they smell the milk, they smell their mommy's skin. So that is always a good way to settle your baby. I'm Michelle Ann. I've just had twins. They're three months old and their names are Amelia and Simone. My breastfeeding journey so far has been um, an amazing journey, but it, it's been hard. It's not easy to breastfeed, but it, in the end, it's wonderful. I um, 
I have an, an older son and I did try to breastfeed but it didn't go so well with the first one. So I was very determined to make it work this time. And I think that if you're very determined then it's easier. For the mommies that is expressing, ensure that you've got a clean sterilized container before you start expressing. Also remember to wash your hands with soap and water. When you express, try and express about 10 to 15 minutes on each breast. I express breast milk and store it in the freezer to use for emergency situations. Very important to keep everything clean when you express milk. Um, you can leave it in the freezer for up to six months. Just important to also date it. Breast milk can be stored at room temperature for four hours, in the fridge door for 24 hours, at the back of a fridge for five days, in the top or bottom freezer, which is a fridge and freezer combination for three months, in a standalone freezer for six months, or in a cooler bag with ice packs for 24 hours. Remember to use the older milk first. That's where the, the tag that you place on with the date comes in very handy. So you can use different containers to make up a feed of the baby. Um, just remember that if the baby didn't finish the feed, unfortunately you can't use that milk again. You have to discard it. If something stresses you out, then your milk supply can dip or even if, if you become sick, so you have to look after yourself first to keep your milk supply up, to keep the babies happy. So you mustn't neglect yourself because then you're actually going to neglect the baby as well. So it is important to just follow a healthy diet. Um, it doesn't change that much from how things were before, um, still doing breakfast, lunch and dinner, um, but it is important to just add as many vitamins and nutrients and protein into the diet as possible, because um, it is for the benefit of your child at the end of the day. You can eat and drink anything in moderation during breastfeeding. There's nothing that you should really avoid. It is important, however, to note um, what you eat and what you drink, the sugar, the caffeine and the alcohol content. If you are going to be consuming or eating any of these um, foods or drinks, probably it's a better idea to take them after you breastfeed because these are taken up into the bloodstream and they could affect um, baby by stimulating baby. Here we've got a very nice salad um, with lots of variety and this would be great for lunch or dinner. It's not always possible to make salad and sometimes the salad doesn't fill you up as much. Um, so you can have a couple of snacks throughout the day. Important then to keep healthy things in the house because otherwise you'll just snack on anything that's available. So it's important um, to have a balanced diet during your pregnancy and during your breastfeeding. Um, and it is a good idea to take multivitamins while you're breastfeeding. So I'm going to show you how to make a jug of jungle juice to keep you hydrated and help with milk production. So the water is ready, which I'm just going to add to the rebels tea. So we're adding two liters of water to the four bags of rebels tea. The rebels tea we then add to the liter of apple juice. And lastly, you add your 60 mils of black thornberry elixir to the mix. And there you have your jungle juice. Cheers. I remember with my first son being born, coming and looking at this little bundle of joy and having to breastfeed him. And I thought, oh my word, everything I've studied about it just went completely down the drain. Whoever said breastfeeding is easy, in my opinion, simply lied. It's hard work, it's dedication, and it's motivation. I had this child on my breast crying. I was sobbing because I was convinced by the time I go home, this child's going to starve. I'm not going to be able to latch him. I'm not going to be able to feed him. And I remember my last day in hospital going, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. And finally I latched him and subsequently breastfed him for 13 months. With Andrew, second child, you think, 
I've done this before, um, it's going to be easy. But every child is different and Andrew's got a tongue tie and a lip tie which made latching quite different in the beginning. Um, we had to latch and relatch quite often. Breastfeeding can be a wonderful experience but there can be challenges during breastfeeding as well and it's important to note these. Breastfeeding challenges could be often as a result of an abnormality with a baby like a cleft palate or a tongue tie but they could also be as a result of um, breast problems with mother. Um, specifically after breast surgery or severely um, inverted nipples. Breastfeeding multiple babies um, at the same time could also pose a, an important challenge to breastfeeding. I feed the twins at the same time and if they're not awake at the same time I will definitely wake the other one up. If the first one shows me cues of um, wanting to breastfeed I will pick her up and settle her and then I will wake up her sister up as well. And then I put them both on either side of me. And then I'll pick them, up, pick them up and put them in the rugby ball position on each side. And then we breastfeed both of them at the same time. And they normally finish around about the same time. They're very calm after the feeds. What you can do is you can allocate a breast to each child if you want to, or you can swap with each feed. And then a mom's emotional well-being um, could uh, affect breastfeeding and could pose a challenge. There's a lot of anxiety with getting everything right and as a new mom you tend to feel quite guilty for doing things the wrong way. Um, but every child is different, every mother is different and just do your best. Persevere and it does get better. Whatever challenge you may face during breastfeeding it's really important that you surround yourself with supportive people. Um, support is important for the specific challenge that you may face, so you might want to consult your lactation consultant, your midwife or your doctor. One of the tips that I got from my, one of my other breastfeeding friends is never quit on a bad day. If you feel like you want to give up, say to me yourself, I'm going to do it three more days and then I can give up. It's hard work. It's dedication, and most importantly, it's motivation. We use whatever time you can to just catch up on some, some well-needed sleep. Make time for yourself in between, because otherwise you will go insane. <laughs> Take the, the, the help that you can get. It does get challenging to try and keep everything going at the end of the day. With things like what your baby wants and when he wants it, I think you as a mum can feel. <laughs> When your baby's in pain, you'll know. When your baby wants to feed, you'll know. So let him guide you and always go with your gut feeling. There is no stronger bond than having your child skin to skin on your chest. And you experience that every time you breastfeed. There are so many precious moments that you share with your child. Um, during breastfeeding, not breastfeeding. Um, just enjoy every moment because it goes by so quickly. Remember, you can do it. Just tell yourself every morning, I can do this and I am going to do what I wanted to do for Michaels, and then you can. Mm -hmm.